Okay, so day two on the smoke system install. Again, we're uh, trying to get this plane ready for sun and fun coming up here. And uh, Warren's working on the wiring now. He's moved on and I know he's explained a lot about the system and he's moved on over to the, the wiring part and uh, getting close to wrapping this up. So I think this will be done today. So this will be a two day install. If it wasn't Warren, it'd probably be a four day install, but at least it's a two day install with Warren here. So I'm gonna kind of talk through the system a little bit based on how Warren's kind of educated me on how this works and things. And he'll pipe in if I'm getting something wrong here, but I thought this would be a great time with everything still off to kind of go through the whole system and show you how this smoke system works. So it's a, it's a pretty cool system. Now, the nice thing about this install is, fortunately this extra 300 already came with a lot of the tabs were already here in place um, for the tanks and, and things like that, for some of the wiring stuff. So that I think made it a little bit easier for Warren, but I'm gonna just go ahead and walk through what you see here. And then we'll have Warren go through the whole system again. And uh, when it's all up and running and stuff and talk you through. So obviously we've got our main tank here. And on the back side, we get a vent on the top. And if you notice, there's a little hole in the middle of this tank because here's the center fuel tank that's got to come up through it. Here's the fuel for it. So this tank had a big hole in it, goes down over the top of the fuel tank. And then from here, we got pipes that come out of this tank down into, it's almost like the fuel system in here. So it's got another little acro tank down here. So I think we got nine gallons up top. Is that what we have? So it's nine total. Nine total, yeah, okay. including the two at the bottom. So this looks like it's about a two gallon down bottom. Yep. And then this one up top. So, you know, the oil flows from here down into this tank with the flapper in it. And then it's pumping from here down into the system. And we're going to show you all that here in a second. So the other thing we have on the tank up here is a sensor, almost like a float switch. I'm not sure it's a float switch. Is it a pressure switch or a float it's switch? It's a float switch. So it is a float switch. Yeah. So when we're filling, we hit the switch back where Warren's wiring right now, and it'll just fill from the bottom tank, which we're going to show you here in a second, until it gets full. And then it's just, uh, this will shut off the system from film. So from here, we're coming out of the tank into this pump. Now, this is a reverse polarity pump. I know Warren talked a couple times a little bit about how it works and stuff, and then we've got these relays. And these relays, based on the rocker switch and the panel there, if you're filling or you're arming or running the system, is going to tell this pump whether to run forward or backwards. Um, the nice thing about this system versus some of the other ones, the way Warren explained it to me, is this has just one pump that can suck the oil up from underneath. So you just put this tube right here in, and I'm going to go down there in a second to show you this. So this tube hooks up, comes up into this pipe, which has a filter on it. Filter comes up into here, and then it pumps it into the tanks. So then when you're ready to run the system, you arm the system and you're in more of a forward, I would guess, right? Forward and reverse, or is it <coughs> load, unload, or how do they wire that? Um, yeah, so it's, so it's bi-directional, so it doesn't have any forward or aft, or what, it doesn't matter to okay. the pump, yeah. So yeah, it's just how, however it's wired up here for the switches, you know, so you'll, you'll flick refill, and then that pump will automatically start spinning in the direction that'll work with the check valve and everything to be able to suck it up from the bucket. Right, okay. <clears throat> so that's what he's doing right now. He's getting these relays and the switches all in there. So this is a reversible pump. So again, it sucks up from here, fills it. Um, but if we're not sucking up, it's driving the system. So we're gonna go through that a little bit more. And the way this is working is, this is coming from the small acro tank down bottom here. So this one flows to the bottom. You got this pipe that comes from the little acro tank here. It's not called an acro tank though, is it? In this yeah, system? they call that a header tank in the header? bottom. <clears throat> yeah, okay, and so then that's a uh, reservoir tank. Reservoir, and then we get that tank and then it's flowing up to here, coming through this check valve. Now this check valve is here because it helps determine whether you're sucking oil up in the system to fill it or if you're actually driving the system to put your smoke on. That's uh, pretty much that one. Now, yeah. Warren has an awesome idea that we couldn't do today because we're not at his shop where he has all the manufacturing tools and stuff, but this check valve, the downside to this system right here, and I agree, is this check valve is behind the firewall. So if you want to get in here and clean this out or check it or, or look this, you got to take the whole body of the plane off. So Warren's solution is, is he installs these check valves on the forward of the firewall. Um, 
But again, we didn't have the tools to be able to fill this gap or redo this pipe. So we have to put it here for now. And maybe the next annual or something, we'll go ahead and move that up to be forward of the firewall because then we can actually access it right here and clean that out if we have to. So that's this side of uh, the system. Okay, so we talked about we've got the tank system on this side. Like I said, it goes through the check valve and then it's going to come down the firewall to the exhaust. Now, here's what's going into the exhaust. Little injector tube here. And fortunately, again, in this plant and in this uh, performance exhaust, they already had the threads welded in there. So this will go right into the exhaust, tap that on there, hose goes on. So you can see what's happening here. We're coming through this system, down this hose, into here, injects the oil into the exhaust. You have smoke. <laughs> so um, we hope. So um, that's this side. And then Warren's still finishing up the vents and stuff. So the other thing I thought was really interesting about how they manufactured this is it looks fiberglass here, but it's actually an aluminum tank on the inside on both of these. And the aluminum tank is then encapsulated by this fiberglass. Now this fiberglass is like a, a big shell that also has a drain in just the fiberglass, not the aluminum tank. That way there, for some reason, you know, you get a hole in it or a sh phrase or something like that and the tank itself is leaking, it won't leak inside the aircraft, it'll leak inside this fiberglass shell and then drain out the bottom. So if you see something draining there, then you got an indication that there's a problem with one of these tanks. Um, so he's finishing up that side and he'll probably go through all that with you when we, when we get there. Um, and then we'll talk about the wiring and things when he finishes that and we'll walk through that. So, so basically this tube here, if you want to fill the system, there's a quick release valve underneath here goes into the quick release valve. This goes down into your tank, whether it's a five gallon or a gallon jug, and then uh, hit the switch. The check valve sense, we're gonna be pulling the oil up into the system, fills the system till it hits the float switch, turns off, we're full. So pretty cool system, uh, pretty big install, but uh, that's where we're at so far here on day two. And as soon as Warren's done with the wiring and stuff, we'll have him walk through that whole side of the system. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so we, Warren has the cockpit at least wired up. I'm gonna go through some of it. Nothing's labeled yet. We still got another switch to put in here. Um, we're gonna kind of go through how this works. And he's up front right now, now wiring everything he did here in the cockpit to where all the action is when it comes to the, the pumps and, and things. So here's how the system's gonna work. And, and Warren's gonna jump in and tell me I'm right or wrong as I go through this. But I went through the schematics with them and it's pretty interesting how this, this system works. So it's got a little magic behind the, the uh, dash here. So we have two switches. So on this side is a single throw, but a three pole switch. So in the back of this, we got three poles in the back of it. And then those are attached to the relays that we talked about there. But it actually dictates whether that pump is gonna run in reverse or not, or forward. And it has to do with two relays that are back inside here that these two switches are connected to. So this left switch is basically when we wanna fill the tank and we have the hose going down into a five gallon bucket with the smoke oil, we're gonna flip this switch on. And because the activate switch is off, it knows which way to run the power to get the right polarity to that pump. So when this switch is, goes up on the left here and the, act, the activation switch here is on the right, um, then that pump will run in reverse. Now the opposite happens when we go to actually fly and we want smoke in the back. So when this switch is down, then the relays know to switch over to this. So we activate the system when we're ready to run smoke on the right hand side here. And now it knows based on the relays that it's gonna run that pump forward to send the oil down into the exhaust system. But also when this switch is clicked up and we activate the system, it sends power to what's gonna be in the throttle here. So in the throttle, we have this switch 
which is basically an on-off toggle. So right on your right hand when you're flying the plane, you don't have to move your hand off it. Just flip this switch off and on. It'll be in here. Smoke comes on, smoke comes off. So it's actually pretty, pretty ingenious and simple for the pilot here, the way that this system is, is wired up. And um, I like that. So we're about to finish up inside here. Warren's going to get some placards on because we got all new placards and things that'll go in here in the system. Right below this switch is the breaker for the system. Great thing about how Warren does all his work is he goes above and beyond when it comes to the logic of where your breakers and your switches and stuff are. So right below the switch that activates the system is the breaker. Makes sense. Uh, so as a pilot, you don't have to think about it. If you've got a problem, it's right there. All right, great. Well, we're getting really close to finishing up this install. So Warren's up front there just uh, checking some fittings and things. And we're going to go around and walk through everything before we put all the panels and stuff back on the plane. So let's just wrap up here in the cockpit. So this is pretty much done. And um, we talked a little bit about this, but here are the two switches or the three switches, I should say, that are going to run the system. So uh, we've got our placards on there. So this is the smoke refill right here. So we flip this switch on as long as this one's off. The relays back here are going to reverse polarity that motor and then suck the oil up into the tank there. Um, and then when this switch is down, this switch, which says smoke arm, energizes the whole system. And then now we use the throttle here, which you can see that we have the switch for on off right here on the throttle. So this is all done up here. Um, everything's ready to roll. So uh, that's the cockpit and we're going to start to work our way up to show you the rest of the system. We'll walk around the plane and then we'll be able to button everything back up and uh, wrap this install up. So let's, let's walk up front and see what Warren's up to. Okay, cool. So I want to talk about this nozzle for a minute while Warren's finishing up the vents on the other side here. But this is really interesting how this works and I'm going to talk about this a little bit. But the nozzle before we cut it and modified it looked like this here at this end. So you can see how you got a little bit of an end here and it's you know, squish down and that sprays the oil into the exhaust here that creates the smoke. Well, what we did is Warren had us modify this so that a couple things. One is uh, we've got the flow down. So we went down to a gallon and a half. So as you can see in the, in the video here, we uh, got it right down to this dot. So in one minute, the flow came up to this one little dot right here. So 1,820 milliliters. And um, from there, we also have it where he drilled some tiny holes here and then angled them in the perfect direction so that the oil would go in there and vaporize in a much more efficient way and then screwed out the, the, the exhaust here. So this nozzle here with the holes in it is turned exactly in the right direction, certain degrees so that it has the little holes that sprays up into here. So just makes a much more efficient and things. So, that's how this nozzle works. And um, let's go ahead and check what we got going on up top here. All right, so here we are. Pretty much everything is done on this side. So we already went through the whole system, but uh, Warren's now putting torque stripes on all these fittings. He's double checking, make sure everything's good. We just tested the system. So we ran a whole bunch of uh, water. We pulled some water up through the filter here into the motor, filled up the whole system. It turned off automatically because of the float switch here. That was perfect, awesome. And then we went in the other direction, put the switch on, on the throttle. And um, then of course we filled the bucket like we just showed you and made sure the system worked, ran the whole system out. No leaks, we did a whole leak check on everything here, make sure that everything was perfect. All the wires are just being fine-tuned right now. He's just wrapping that stuff up. So uh, that's, that's it for this side. So we made some good progress here. We're going to go over the other side and, and show you all the vents and stuff. And then hopefully we'll be able to get Warren to come on camera with us and really just kind of talk through quickly the whole system. And then we're going to start putting all the, the panels and stuff back on. So let's go check what he's doing on the other side. Okay, so we're just wrapping up on this side. There's not a whole lot on this side to show you, but a couple of important items that, that I can walk you through. Warren's down there just battening up the uh, vents and the drains. And as you can see here, we've got the drain coming out of the tank. Now, this drain is not in the aluminum in the tank. 
This drain is only for the shell that's around the tank. So if something happens at a tank and it ruptures, you'll see the oil be coming out here and dripping. And then you know you got a problem with the tank. But the nice thing is, is the shell keeps it all encased and it doesn't leak out into the aircraft. So, you know, up top here we have the vents. So we got the vent here with air that gives the tank a little bit of air as it's filling. Um, then we have our drains here. So you got a drain here. So there's a drain on the main tank here, and there's also a drain on the smaller accumulator tank down there. And they're all connected right here through these T's. And then they go out to where Warren's battening those up right now. Again, those are drains for if either one of those in, inner tanks leaks. And then these are just the air vents that uh, supply air to those tanks. So not much on this side, but obviously a couple of key critical components that get in the system to work right. So uh, again, he's torque, doing some torque stripes and getting this all wrapped up. And uh, then we'll get him to walk us through the whole system. So there you go. All right, hey everybody, as you can see, plane is back together. End of day two. I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. And you did all the work. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm excited. I can't wait to get up and fly this plane and put that smoke on. It's one of the last things that uh, we have to do, but anything we need to think about or, or know about the system that we should be worried about? Um, yeah, makes a mess. <laughs> You'll be cleaning the aeroplane a lot, but yep. uh, at least, uh, now you can obey the uh, Brian smoke on. <laughs> oh. So everybody, we're going to close it out here. And um, remember, Warren Silliers, C-I-L-L-I-E-R-S. You know, you're going to hear a lot more from Warren uh, on a lot of the E3 member events. If you come in the Sun and Fun, which we're working hard to get this plane ready for, come to Sun and Fun, you're going to see Warren there too. So he'll be hanging with us at the members of EIP tent. He'll be doing some talks there. And uh, even in webinars and live calls, you're going to get to be able to get access to him and talk to him. So we're excited for it. We can't wait for everybody to see this flying at Sun and Fun and see some smoke coming out of it now. There we go. But uh, awesome. Good. Thanks. That was a lot of work. Thank you, Brian. Loved it. It's good. See you guys in the next one. Yankee Victor, flight of two, smoke on.